Hello friends. So we have done all the lessons for class 11. Now today we begin the first lesson which is the last lesson for class 12. Understand? Now this is a short story. Short story, the background is background is Franco Prussian War. Prussia, Prussia today is Germany, Poland and the part of Austria. This is this happened in 1870. The war continued started in 1870 and continued right up to 1871. The result was the German army occupied part of the French territory that is Alsace and and Lorraine. The result, and the consequence of this war was the, in Alsace and Lorraine, French was taught in schools. But the, from the moment Germans took over, Germans ordered that or, order, orders came from uh, Berlin that the French, the instead of French, Germans should be taught in this on all the schools in Alsace and uh, uh, Lorraine. So in this context, you should understand the last lesson. Till then, in schools, French was taught. Now, from tomorrow, German should be taught. So that the last lesson, the teacher announces that this is the last lesson in French. And tomorrow I will be leaving. A new teacher will come and take over. And that is that will be he will be teaching German. Now, issues involved mainly this chauvinism. Chauvinism is excessive love or even unreasonable support for a cause. That is chauvinism. The male chauvinism. That means uh, you can see male chauvinism is excessive support for male power. You can also have female chauvinism, and uh, probably the result of that is this uh, uh, this uh, organization or a society called the uh, Witch Women's International Terrorist Conspiracy from Hell. W I T C S. Uh, women's International Terrorist Conflict Conspiracy from Hell. This is an acronym that is uh, you put together the initials of some words and make a new name, new word. For example, WHO, World Health Organization. So this is a French word. It comes from the name of a person, Chauvin, Nicolas Chauvin, who had who had ex excessive love and support for Napoleon. So it is from there this word comes. And then equivalent in English is jingoism. Jingoism. Here in this story you find linguistic chauvinism. Means excessive support for the language of a country. For uh, love, excessive love. For example, the French, they had linguistic uh, chauvinism the way that they loved and they supported uh, the, their language, their mother tongue. Germans, their uh, linguistic chauvinism caused replacement of French in these two uh, races, that is Alsace and the and, uh, Lorraine. So that is the background. Now I told you the short story set in the background of the Franco Prussian War and told in the perspective of a little boy, Franz. He tells us the story. He is the narrator, the child narrator. And then we have got the Prussians won and they occupied Alsace and Lorraine, part of French territory until World War I. Once again, on the Prussian occupation, they replaced the native French with their language, German. The story tells the impact of this on the teacher, Hamel, M. Hamel, and the students and the villagers. Now, the characters here, France, little France, is the narrator. Uh, he is a very interesting boy, you will see that. Then, secondly, you find the teacher, Mr. M. Hamel, who has put in 40 years of service in that school. Then blacksmith, watcher, he makes only a guest appearance. The villagers, old houser, and the former postmaster and former mayor sitting in the in this in the class. Why are they sitting? We will see after some time. So I think that uh, linguistic chauvinism means excessive support, excessive love, uh, and even to the bordering, to the extent of being unreasonable. So that is chauvinism means male chauvinism, female chauvinism, linguistic chauvinism. Chauvinism and so Equivalent, this is French, I did only. Equivalent to that is in English, it is jingoism. Jingoism. Okay. So now the story background I told you. It's fine, I think. There's a teacher who has been teaching uh, French 
for the last 14 years and suddenly he gets an order to quit because he has to go out, leave the country in favor of a teacher who would be coming to teach German. That's the point. A foreign language to the people who are speaking uh, French. Their mother tongue is going to be replaced and he is heart -drawn. Now, here another point is language determines identity. Understand? Another point is what happens when your native language is replaced by a foreign power? You should understand. That time you will understand. Till then you won't give much importance to your language. You take for granted. At that time you understand. Oh, it is going. From tomorrow we will have to speak a foreign language. Our identity is going to disappear. And though our identity is going to be shattered. And so say that your language is precious. You are just a treasure. You should nourish it. You should love it. And you should protect it. So that is the message that you get when you, after you read this story. Now, little Franz, it's the morning, a very beautiful morning. Little Franz, he starts to school, unwilling. He is not very happy. Two things. One, he likes outdoor life. He wants to go seeking birds, eggs, angling, fishing, and all those things. Another point, but the reason is, <laughs> the basic reason is, heart of heart, he does not know French. He is not interested in that. That morning, he is, the teacher had announced earlier that he would ask questions to him about participles and absolutely he had no idea about what participle is, what are the rules for participle and so on. So first he had a temptation, why not go, today is a very fine day and why not go and uh, play, with, uh, uh, play with the nature itself, so to say. No? clear sky and then there will be uh, flowers and uh, birds and so on. I can go and seek birds, etc. So. But anyhow, he resists the temptation. He decides at last to go. So that is what you see, the picture of little Franz going to school unwillingly. But he resists the temptation and he goes. And what happens is that in between, he sees, he hears the uh, drilling of the Prussian army, the German army. Drilling was going on. And one of the way, he, see, he, he saw that there is a bulletin board. And bulletin board is a notice board like this. Some, many people are gathered around the bulletin board and they are reading something. One of them was this blacksmith and his apprentice. Apprentice means a trainer, so a person who is undergoing training under a uh, an expert, that is an uh, apprentice. So uh, he was, so what might be the reason? He knew that for the last two years, bad news would be appearing on that bulletin board. Maybe something, she is not bother about that because already late and he was running, running to school. Then this uh, black man said, Oh, little bub. So that is friendly, he said, Bub. Little bub, don't run. You have plenty of time, you don't worry. He did not understand what is it. I mean, he uh, almost near the, his school, he thought that there will be commotion, a lot of din and bustle, opening and closing of uh, desks, opening of books, books, the, when the students sometimes they drop the books, you know, knowingly or unknowingly on the ground, or sorry, on the floor, this thing, absolutely no noise. They say, he thought that pin drop silence. It is like Sunday morning. He said, what happened? He was thinking that when there is commotion, he can slowly sneak in without being noticed by the teacher. But here what happened is that everything is calm and quiet. So he was just wonderstruck and thunderstruck. And what happened? And uh, the teacher did not scold him uh, for being late. He said, you get in. Little friends, you get in. We were about to start without you. Begin the class without you, he said. And uh, he, before that he was thinking how shameful it will be in front of everyone. I would be really, it will be a dreadful moment for me to enter the class in front of everyone. But here nobody notices, nobody bothers. Everybody is, so for some reason, everybody is uh, sad and everybody, everybody is uh, uh, unhappy and they're calm and quiet and still. 
Then he looked, he was surprised. That was the morning of surprises for him. People uh, gathered around the bulletin board. Well, the blacksmith telling him, don't hurry, there's plenty of time. And uh, the stillness in the class, absolute silence in the class. And Hamel is not scolding him. He is walking to and fro with his uh, iron roller uh, under his arm. And he welcomes him. Now, oh, what is this? Then he looked around, he saw that some villagers were sitting at the back benches. Usually the back benches are, are uh, you know, vacant. Nobody uh, sits there. But villagers, there is an old house. He is also having a piece of canvas with him. That is a primer with him. Written something, uh, something he is writing and something has been written already. Then he found the old uh, postmaster there. So there is a mayor there. Hey, what is this? What is happening there? Suddenly, uh, the words of the teacher. He took a seat and then the words of the teacher. He said, uh, the teacher said that uh, today this will be the last French class. From tomorrow you will have to, my dear children, he said, my dear children, this is the last lesson. I, I am, I shall give you. The order has come from Berlin that tomorrow on which German will be taught you. Another point, another thing that he saw which made him, which surprised him was the teacher is appearing in, in the best, that is on price days, see, or inspe inspection days, inspection schools, or price days, merit day celebrations, the teacher would put on his beautiful green coat, then frilled shirt and little black cap. Today he has come with that. It's not a price day. It is not an inspection day. Why he has come there? So one surprise after another. Understand? That is. Then, then, then an announcement. That is another reason for surprise. My dear children, <coughs> sorry. The words came to him like a thunderclap. Suddenly he felt sorry. That is the thunderclap. And he heard that there won't be, tomorrow, from tomorrow there will be no French class. He was very happy because there is no need of learning and by hunting all this. Uh, French participle rules him because of, of which he knows practically nothing. It is an, 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 it first came as a thunderclap, then he felt sorry. He said, Oh, I will miss this teacher, I will miss my grammar text, <laughs> which he hated, so to say, and I will miss my books, that is, history of saints. He said, Oh, then he thought, this may be the reason why he started thinking. Ah, this is the reason why the villagers are there. The students are uh, very uh, silent. They are very serious. On their face, you could see uh, very, they are unhappy and they are very sad. Sadness writ large on the faces of these children, including the little ones. That is, the, who were, who, who were, who came there only for Miss nursery level students, we can say. Nursery rhyme and so on. Everybody was very serious. They were doing something like that. Then the teacher said, okay, we'll do one thing. Uh, we'll start, we'll start, uh, he said, uh, we will uh, start the class. But before that, he said like this, what we should all be sad about this situation. We should all reproach ourselves. We are responsible for this, this situation. That is, we are going to lose our language once and for all. See, students, you are not serious about learning, learning French. Your parents, they are to be blamed because they, they were not serious. They used to send you, instead of school, send you the mill or on the farm to work. And I myself, I also used to confessions, confessions of a teacher. I said, Sometimes I used to send you to water my gardens. And sometimes when I felt like going for fishing, I used to give you a holiday. In a, whatever it is, it is a sad thing that we don't know our own language. See that? We don't know our own language. We neglected our own language. We did not collectively nourish our own language. So when the Germans come here, they will look at us and say, what you, Frenchman, you don't know your own language, then why do you worry about 
uh, our taking over and our teaching you, arranging, the arranging or teaching you German in this course. Then afterwards he said, he explained everything. He explained the rules of principles. He asked the friends to recite the rules. He stood up. He held it. He, he held the desk with his hand and bent down like could not look up to his teacher. But he said, Are you also, you know, now the situation. And then he explained everything. He's, he was so sincere, so anxious to teach everything to them at one stroke. All what he knew, he wanted to explain to the students that. And the students were very attentive. And even France, little France says, France says that uh, I understood everything. And he explained everything very clearly. After, after grammar, there was a writing session. And writing session he had brought, written beautifully on pieces of paper, uh, Alsace, for France, France Alsace, France Alsace. And they, they looked like little flags. So look at that. And then, he also gave them a lesson in history. The, the children, the small children, they were very seriously tracing fish hook. That was the word given to them. And afterwards they sang Ba, Ba, Be, Be, Bu, Ba, Be, Be, Bu in unison. In Smith, they, they, were, they were singing like in nursery, nursery rhymes. They reciting this nursery rhyme. And they found that this period was very serious. The Beatles came in. Nobody bothered about it. The, the pigeons were queen. They, no, no, nothing would uh, distract them. The boy who used to seek distractions, he was also very serious and he was writing and he was listening and he found that everything is very clear. His grammar books, they became very light, not heavy for them. History of science book, they became very friendly. So, what is happening to me? So, the reason is that it's going something, you are going to lose something, then naturally what you love? You will have great love for it. Love for it. And the class is over. No disturbance, nothing of that sort. And then, uh, to pay, he, 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 after this he said, no, he said, he found that it is, and the teacher said, from tomorrow, this is the last French class for you, tomorrow. The, you will start with German. Then he said, you should love your language. You are learning French language, he said. It's the clearest, the most beautiful, and it's the most logical. He said, the language is the key to your person. Key to your person means when you are enslaved, if you want to get liberated, you should speak your language, nourish your language, protect your language, use your language, and love your language. Patriotism is equal to your love for your language. So, he gave this advice, last advice. Then, he, the village people, Old house, he was writing something, he had brought something with him, a piece, piece of canvas, that is primer. He got up and then he could not read the words. Instead, he read out the spelling. For example, he said, Father, you can, if you cannot read, what will you do? F-A-T-H-E-R. And the people, they felt, it was a very sad and solemn moment, but still they felt like a laughing and also crying. Why? Because you have got a, a the, the, as it has been said, the mixing memory and desire. What is memory and desire? Memory for their language. Desire what? Desire for the country. Desire for protecting, loving and also nourishing the land. So it was a kind of mixing memory and desire. After paying the respects, then the teacher got and stood on the chair. He looked very, very tall. And he said that, uh, and Hamel says, 
starting motionless so to say. Yeah, his heart broken. He probably might have thought like this. He was very sad because he had a garden. And he himself had planted a hope vine. Now it has grown and almost reached the hope. He had a walnut tree that also has grown and they about to produce fruit. He had to leave all this thing. Then the room above, he heard his sister packing his trunks. He felt very sad because the next day he had to leave. Students also, they were also very sad. The villagers, they were very sad. 40 years of teaching. 40 years of service in that school. 40 years, that means he, he became part of the school. Language, he loved very much. All what he wanted to, uh, he knew, he wanted to teach the students then and there at one stroke. But he could not do it, as he said. Then he stood on the chair, tall, and uh, he wanted to say something. What happened is that uh, he could not say it completely. His voice started, his voice actually broke, trembled. And he said, I, I, then he could not say that, could not complete it. So he took a chalk. With all his might, he wrote on the board, Vive la France. That means, Vive long live France. Then, heartbroken, he could not speak. He lifted his hands and without any, any word, he showed gesture. The class he saw and the lesson he saw. The last lesson. Now, this is the story. Now, we will start reading this section by section. I will be using as always uh, I have been doing the communicative method of teaching. Communicative method of teaching here means first I will explain all the words as I did in the class before class one, explain all the words, then highlights, questions, answers as we will take section by sections and then try to understand this beautiful story. Well, the story is written by uh, the author is uh, Alphonse Daudet. Alphonse Daudet, French, and E.T. is not pronounced Daudet. He was a novelist, a playwright. He was, he participated in the French in naturalism movement. He began his life as a teacher. He was not happy with that. Moved to Paris and he became a journalist, a successful journalist. He was very famous and popular among the French literary circles and uh, he, is, he is chiefly remembered for sentimental stories of provincial life, especially in southern France. So a French writer who writes short stories and play, short stories and plays and also novels. So we are going to see how beautifully he has written this from the perspective of a truant student. Yes, it's not very serious student. He actually, France is in search of distractions. See what a tremendous a sea change had taken place in his mind today. The last class. So this is the case, my dear students, with everything. When you have eyes, you don't, you take for granted. You don't, you don't become conscious of its importance. When you have your parents look after you, you don't, uh, you don't uh, realize how great the services of your parents are. When you have your teachers, dedicated teachers to teach you, when they leave, you will hope, oh, what you will, you will say, oh, what a great man was he. So when they are with you, you love them, you look after them. You respect them and you serve them. That's what you have to do after reading this lesson. So by see you again with section by sections and the method will be communicating the method of teaching. Bye.